In this tutorial, I'm going to be jumping around talking about various audio editing aspects. Make sure you've seen the Cubase SX3 Level 1 tutorial DVD since this information is built upon it. Let's start with the info line and the audio file. Make sure the info line is up and that you have an audio file ready. The info line is this button here. One thing I love about Cubase is that you can rename the audio file right on your project page. No need to go messing around in any other windows. You can do this where it says File. Change it to a new name like My Audio File. This is instantly reflected on the project page. When you cut an audio file in half, look at the naming now. It says My Audio File twice. Now that can be a little bit confusing. That's where there is something called description. Rename the description of the first half of this audio file to first half, and the second to second half. The name of the audio file goes in brackets, and a description comes first. To get around cutting really fast, you might want to do this. Place one hand on the mouse, as usual, and then place the other hand on the numbers 1, 3, and 5, just above the letters QWERTY on your keyboard. Press 1, 3, and 5, and notice that the object selector, the split, and the eraser are the tools that get picked. 1, 3, 5. With these three tools, you can do almost anything. Watch this. I'll call out the number that I'm using. 1, 3, 5, 1, 3, 5, 3, 5, 1. Still on one, three, and five again. As you can see, I can move around super fast by using one, three, and five. It's definitely worth practicing this. The only thing to be careful about is that the one button can change the object selector tool into sizing moves contents and sizing applies time stretch. Make sure you keep it on normal sizing. When you chop up an audio file, you might want to turn it into a new file so that you can perform editing to it and not affect the original file. This is called bouncing. Let's say we cut this file at the end here and move it over. Now double click on it. It should say sample editor at the top of the window. Right-click on the main top part of the window and make sure that View Options is clicked. Press the Show Audio Event button. This lets you see the audio file or darkens the parts you are not using. You can actually adjust the event start and end time, which is also reflected on the project page. All this is nice, but we don't want all this extra audio information. We want to get rid of it. Close the sample editor, make sure the event is still highlighted, and then choose Bounce Selection from the audio menu. This has just made a new audio file that is exactly this long and placed it in the audio pool. Since we want to use this new shorter file, press the Replace button. Now double click on the event and you'll notice that the audio file has no more extra handles on each side. Sometimes you want to keep pieces of audio files so that you can come back to them. Instead of bouncing every piece you like, you can make regions. 
Regions are almost like markers for audio files that just remember certain points within the audio file. Click the Show Regions button. In this window, we can add, delete, select, and play regions. Let's add two regions. Use the first tool, the Range Selection tool, and select an area you like. Now press the Add button. You can name it whatever you like. You can adjust the regions as you wish. Close the sample editor and erase the audio files from the project page. Open the pool and you'll notice a plus sign beside the audio file. These are our regions. We can drag these back into our project page whenever we need them. Now let's say we had a click in our audio file and we need to repair it. Set me free. Double click on the audio file and enter the sample editor. Zoom in close enough so that the audio file breaks from being solid. It's at this point here where it breaks from being solid. You can use the Draw tool to redraw the audio file and repair the click. Now let's listen back to it. Set me free. Perfect. 